Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two as two old guys review great old films and old TV shows from the Vintage Film Channel. Dot com and YouTube slash Vintage Film Channel. Today, we've got a, a feature film from 1929. It's, an, it's a kind of a war film. It's a, a, a military airplane film. What do you call this? Um, but the real, the real treat is that it's an early Frank Capra film. Frank Capra, one of the world's famous directors. Um, and this is an early work of his doesn't quite live up to the standards that he set later, but uh, it's got a lot of good things going for it. And it's got to start someplace, and quite frankly, uh, Frank Capra, well, this is 1929, Frank Capra, uh, during uh, World War II, made a lot of propaganda films. Uh, yes. And this is not quite that. This was a, this was a, had the full support of the Marine Corps, and they supplied airplanes and people for it. But it had um, one of the really interesting things is it had um, aerial uh, photography that rivaled in, in some ways with very few planes uh, and money compared to Howard Hughes, who a year later did Hell's Angels with tons more planes and, uh, uh, and money. So yeah. you know, here, Frank Copper, was, this is a budget version of Hell's Angels released a year before Hell's Angels. Yeah, it is. But I, for me, it was the. I want to, before you play it, Art. I want to take a look at this poster here, Columbia's Mighty Roadshow Attraction. Mm. For those people who are film aficionados or or studio, uh, you know, old Hollywood aficionados, the roadshow was a method of distribution. What they would do is they would open up a movie. Mm. Oh, I don't know, Chicago, New York, and L.A. Right. They'd play it there for two weeks in hopes that it would get a lot of attraction. And then when they sent it around to all the smaller cities, it, people would be flocking to see it because they've heard so much about it. Well, the other reason for it, quite frankly, was it saved money. Prince, every time you had to make a copy of a feature film, it cost a ton of money. And so what they did is they saved money on that. They'd take the from the big cities, let's say 10 big cities, then they take those 10 and bicycle them, or we called it bicycling them around. And you'd have to wait till it got to your town. If, if you're old enough like I am, you'll remember waiting for certain films to come to your town. Well, and if, sometimes you could you could go to the next town and see it if, early. If you're old enough like we are, especially John, who I'm actually a little bit older than, I think we figured it out once when we checked our birthdays, John remembers bicycling uh, movies around, so I, mean, I do. That, can, no. that gives you some sense. No, he, it was he, just he, he he's, a, he's a student of history. Quite frankly, I never, well, I understood the concept. I never knew it was called a, uh, a roadshow, and uh, yeah. it makes all sorts of sense. Uh, yeah. Today, of course, with the digital distribution, they just push of a course. button and everybody has a full copy in high definition and it's, nothing goes anywhere. delivered by satellite to it's the movie theater. Delivered by satellite dish, that's correct. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, in any event, uh, shall we get to the exciting movie? Yes, let it play. Hit the button to play uh, something. So I'm, I'm going to uh, start off uh, by saying that this starts off in um, with a the, the uh, one of the main protagonists as a football star who uh, there are some uh, Marines in the uh, audience, but it's a right. football game and it was based on wrong way Harrigan or remember where somebody, Corrigan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he caught, he, he, he picked up a fumble and he ran the wrong way and his own team had to tackle him before yeah. he uh, scored points for the opposition. And then he joins the Marines. Then he joins the Marines because everybody's laughing at him every place. So he figures he's going to redeem himself. Yeah. And uh, he's taken under the wing of uh, uh, some guy named Panama, the, the guy on the right with the mustache, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, tries to become an aviator. And I don't know, you want to add anything else on it? it the, the basic thing here is that it's an early Capra film. Yes, it really is. And it does, it's got a little bit of heart uh, to it, you know, with the, this guy's uh, got to redeem himself somehow and he goes into the service and flies planes and and all that stuff but it's not 
it doesn't have the heart of the famous Capra films from the 40s right. uh, or the 50s. And and so, but it, I'll tell you what, it's a nice little movie. It's pretty interesting. Very well done. Aren't, why don't you try fast forwarding to one of the flying sequences? Give me a number. Do you have a number? Uh, I don't have a number. Just scan it, I guess, is the best way to do it. Uh, I I was very impressed with the flying sequences. I thought I saw what we call a process shot. That is, you put mm. the, the guy in a mock-up of an airplane, you put the camera in front of him, mm. and behind him is a screen with the footage being projected on the screen behind him. But no, this was all shot in the air. Most of it was shot in the air. Right. They did use some miniatures, and they did a lot of shooting from the ground. But mostly the aerial shots from airplane to airplane were shot with really special rigs. And I think, I'm not sure, I think it was pretty innovative for its time. Yep. Now, only a year later, Howard Hughes would win the Academy Award for Hell's Angels. Yeah, and, the that was very, and the interesting thing about Hell's similar. Angels is he had actually uh, shot it uh, previous to this movie, but never released it because uh, sound was introduced and he wanted Hell's Angels to have sound. So, oh, so really? that's why he, he shot Hell's Angels again. And it wound up showing up a year later because he had dozens and dozens and dozens of airplanes. It was very innovative. Yeah. So the Hell's Angels, certainly, if you're a movie aficionado, is something to watch. But here, uh, the Vintage Film Channel has found this almost lost uh, yeah. uh, footage this, uh, of an early Capra film. And that's... It no other reason. I mean, it's a pretty girl, and uh, yeah. she gets caught up in romance between the two guys, and there's heroism at the very end. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so, it, from that side point, it, I mean, but it's an early Capra film, and you can see that this guy Capra, who was a, an immigrant, who had virtually nothing, and he just took bits parts and extras and then he started writing a little yep. bit and eventually worked his way up to directing and he had he really had a long struggle but he became this amazingly talented director yeah, uh, yeah. in the end and but this is an early capra film made on a shoestring yeah well what but with the help of the u.s marines yes um so it, it's an interesting uh, look at if nothing else the military air force of the time. Right. You know? um, anyway, I recommend you watch it. Uh, if nothing else, look for little things that might be Capra-esque, Frank Capra-esque. Right. I think they're there. I think you'll find them. Um, it's just not, doesn't have the deep heart of uh, some of his later work. Like Mrs. Smith Goes to Washington. Uh, what was that one? Uh, A Wonderful Life? That, that, yep. that little one? Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, I mean, so he has really some classics. But it's wonderful that, that uh, a vintage film channel was able to find and preserve. And of course, uh, everything that they do is they up it. So they make it, they, they take these old films that are falling apart and sure. they turn them into pretty high quality uh, digital versions that are now Gracie, available. Gracie, if, if you go to filmchannel.com, you'll see, I think Gracie's got some videos on how she digitizes yeah how she corrects the color, gets rid of scratches, things like that. It's, right. it's, they do a wonderful job with these old films, really. Yep. Anyway, uh, we'll see you next time on uh, Two Old Guys from uh, Celebrating Act Two. Which please, please subscribe, subscribe to, to our, our channel. Yep. So, see, now we're both getting into this thing because we want to get 100 million uh, subscriptions. We're looking for a first thousand, but on that way um, uh, to a, a hundred million. <laughs> And so please subscribe to us, subscribe to Grace Vintage Film Channel, and uh, encourage us to keep uh, waking up uh, every week and, and telling you what we feel about another film. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.